In this video, we'll take a quick tour of a VBCS project so we can kind of see what all of the major artifacts are and see where we do what. So let's go into project. Let's create a new one called CRM CRUD app. It's important to understand the main scopes of a, a VBCS application. It starts at the project level, that's the top level. Then inside of that are applications. Applications can contain flows, and flows contain pages. Right? So a project holds multiple applications, right? web apps and mobile apps, and then it holds some artifacts that are common to all or accessible to all of these. So you have service connections, you have business objects, and you have processes. So starting at our top level scope, which is the project, which is what contains all of these, the only thing that's really interesting at the project level is the settings, right? When you go into the settings, you can do things like um, set the access um, uh, settings for the application, you can add roles, um, and you can add other members to this project so other members can go in and click around on it. Um, the interesting stuff happens inside of an application. So let's go into here and create a web app called a CRM CRUD. Okay, so here's my application. And now this web apps view or the mobile applications view, right? These views provide kind of a logical view over the application, gives us places where we can launch editors like a flow editor, right, or an app editor, um, and so forth. Now, these are actually logical views of things that actually reside in several um, different files. And if you want to see what the file structure looks like, you can come down here to the source view, right, and this will show us the, the full file structure. This is also what will be checked into Git um, if we check this into version control. Okay, so taking a look at our scopes, we talked about the project scope at the application scope. We open up the application editor by clicking the top level app node, right? At the app level, we can define variables and types, and we can define actions. We'll be talking about all of those in the next lab. We can set our uh, application level settings, um, including some security settings for the whole app, right? Um, and an important thing here is the default page, the default shell page that's going to get opened. Shell page is basically the container that the content you create um, goes into. So this header and this footer down here are actually served up by a shell page. And we'll talk more about that in the creating a navigation bar um, or a navigation menu chapter later on. So we talked about the project, talked about the application. Oh yes, and if you want to know where these things um, get stored down to, you can also um, add app-wide custom functions that are available everywhere in the, in the app, right? And this bottom one just shows you a code view over the JSON. So all of the things in these editors all save down to JSON, right? And the custom JavaScript functions save down to JS. And if we look inside here, we'll see appflow.js, appflow.json, that's where those guys get stored, All right? So same thing with flows. What are flows? Flows are encapsulated groups of UI and logics. They're ways to chunk up your page, um, I mean your app, into more manageable pieces. And we see in web applications, we see we have flows here. I can double uh, click the, the flow name to access my editor, which again, I can have variables, types, actions, I can have JavaScript functions, and in my settings, uh, important part here is the default page. Each flow has its default page, which serves as the main entry point into that flow. And then if we go down to actual pages, right, um, a page is actually consists of three files. You will have an HTML, a JS, and a JSON, right? And so, by the way, I can click this 
to close this window, get a little bit more screen real estate. Um, so yeah, and here's my graphical editor um, for my page. I can also see the structure of that page. Right now there's nothing in it, so not much to show. Um, through there, I have my property inspector. Anything I select will show me general properties, right? I can switch into a code view and see the code. Again, nothing there. And then, just like at the other scopes, I can find variables, types, actions, settings, right? And my JavaScript functions. So that's just a tour of a VBCS application. In the next video, we'll actually start building stuff.